Hey guys, welcome back to another KV tutorial. So in today's video, I'm actually going to be going into something called the KV design language. Now, I guess you could call it KV as well, but the file extension for it is .kv. And essentially, you can kind of think of this almost as like a CSS um, because it's a design language, which is meant to kind of simplify your code so that you don't have to have like if you remember in the last video, we had like dot add widget and then we were defining the widget and we were giving it like a text color and a font color. So this is just a much easier way to be able to style elements. So essentially what I'm going to do is you can see here, I've deleted all the code from the last video, essentially other than the main stuff. And I'm actually going to recreate exactly what we did in the last video using the Kivi design language to show you the contrast between the two. And you guys can pick whether or not you'd like to design things directly from Python without using this KV language, but it's super simple. Um, and it's not like a whole new programming language to learn. It's literally like, you'll see when I start doing it, how easy it really is. But essentially the reason we use that is to separate our style from our code. And it's typically a good idea. The way I kind of like to think of it is separating your HTML from your JavaScript or from your JavaScript, from your CSS. Um, if you guys ever did any web development stuff, you'll probably see why I'm using that as a, like to relate to it. All right. So essentially what we need to do um, is we need to create a, a style file, right? And this file is going to have all of the, well, the styling code in it for us. So what we need to do is we have to create a new file. So if you're working in PyCharm, you can just go new file. Otherwise, just go new text file. Uh, I'm sure you guys can probably figure out how to do that. If not, let me know. And what you're going to have to call this file, if you're working with me and you named your main class that has the build method in it, my app, you're going to go lower cases, my dot KV. Now I'm going to explain why we do this in a second, but if you're working with me and you named it the same, you can do my dot KV. Okay. And save that file. Now, if you didn't, what you have to do is you have to name the KV file the same as this class name, except if it ends in app, you have to remove the app. So in this case we said my app. So we just called it my, and we removed the app. Now also notice everything is in lower cases. So everything you type in this file, um, sorry, not in this file, like whatever you name this file is always going to be lower cases. So even if my class name was my app like that with a capital M Y, you would just name it lowercase M Y dot K V. Okay. And you're removing the app. So to just show you a contrast here in case anyone's confused, if I do like hello dot app, I would name this file hello dot K V and hello would be in all lower cases. Now, if I were to name this file, um, let's just say like CLS, then I would just name my file CLS.kv again in all lower cases. If I were to name it CLS.app or CLS app, then again, it would still be CLS because if you end in app, you don't use that in the name. I know it's confusing. Why the heck would they do that? Don't ask me, but that is how you do it. If you're having any issues with that, please let me know. Okay, so now that we have that file, I'm going to show you how we can actually add widgets to our screen without doing anything in this Python class. Actually, there's one thing we have to do. So the first thing we're going to do, for, sorry, from Python, uh, excuse me, so we're going to do kivi.uix.widget. So we're going to import that, and then we're going to import widget. Now, the reason we're doing this is because our class has to inherit from widget, um, just when we're going to be using it inside this KV file. So we just need to import this widget and then just make it inherit from widget as opposed to that grid layout that we had before. So now we're going to go into this KV file. Now this KV file is really nice. Uh, and essentially the way it works is you can just type out exactly what you want in here to show up on, uh, on the screen. So what we have to first do is we have to reference the class that we're going to be using to well draw things to the screen. So like if we had multiple windows, we would reference different classes and you'll see the way that we do this. So our class is called my grid, right? And this is what's going to be returned from my app and it's what's building. So it's what we need to reference first. So what we'll do in here is we'll do a little tag and we'll say my grid. Now this defines that we're going to be working with the my grid class. Okay. You put in this little tag and everything in here works by indentation, not brackets. Okay. So just like Python, everything needs to be indented properly. So we're going to hit tab and I'm just going to type something out and then we'll talk about exactly what it's doing. Okay. I'm going to type label colon tab again, and then say text. And we'll just say tech with Tim. Okay. Now I'm going to save this file control S. All right. And let's actually, let's talk about exactly what I did here. So my class name was my grid inherits from widget in here. So we're going to return my grid, right? So we have this KV file. We haven't done anything in the Python file to reference this. Okay. We just named it appropriately. We named it my again, because that's the way the naming convention works. And we're going to say here, we're going to put a label and it's going to have the text 
tech with Tim. So let's just run this first and see what's happening. I'll explain why after. So you can see that we actually get tech with Tim showing up in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. So you might have expected it to be in the middle. I'll talk about why that doesn't happen in a second. But essentially, you can see that we've added a label to our Kibi file. And we didn't like type anything to load this file in. What actually happens is when you run Kibi, it automatically looks for this class. It looks for this style file. And the way it does that is because it looks at this class name. Oh, I don't, okay, I don't know what I just did there. It looks at this class name, right? And then it tries to find a Kivi file that is that goes with it. So in this case, my.kv, it finds that, and then it can parse through this and add those widgets for us. So uh, let's just see how exactly this works. So I added a label, and then I had a text property, tech with Tim. Now, the reason that it's like in the bottom left hand corner is just because we have to kind of move it around, which I'm going to show you in the next video. But let's actually start building what we had in the last video using this KV file. So what we're going to do to do this, and I sorry, I just got to look at my other screen here quickly, is we're going to set up exactly what we did before. Um, and I'll, sh I'll just go through it and it's better as an example. So I'm going to make a grid layout. Okay. And the grid layout is going to have columns uh, two, right? Or actually we need to do columns one because we're going to have multiple grid layouts. Okay. So we're going to have a grid layout and it's going to have uh, one column. Okay. Inside of this grid layout, we're going to have another grid layout. So notice that because this other grid layout is going to be inside of this, I have it indented in in line with this. So that means that anything that kind of is like, that's why the indentation works. Anything inside, so like indented past is going to be inside something. So if I put this label here, now it's going to be inside this second grid layout. So I'll go through, it'll make more sense once I kind of get typing, but essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rebuild what I had before. So label, we'll say his name, and I'm actually, I'm just going to do one last this time just to save us some time. And what else we had in grid layout? We had a text input. So let's put that. And then what was a property of text input? Multi line equals false, right? Okay. And then again, inside of grid layout, we had another label. So let's do that. And we'll say text equals, I'm just going to do email instead of last name this time. We'll just ignore that. And then we'll do uh, text input equals multi line. Oh, what am I saying? Okay. So actually I already made a mistake here. Equal signs. I'm used to Python. They need to be colons just like uh, you might have in CSS, right? So if you guys are putting equal signs, it's not going to work. You got to do colons. Okay. Okay. So text input, uh, colon tab, and then we'll say multi line colon false like that. I don't think it matters if you have a space or not afterwards. Um, I mean, you guys can play with that. Okay, so we have that now. So we added that uh, grid layout inside of the other grid layout. So if you remember what else we had, we also added a button. So let's add this and the button had text colon uh, and we said submit like that. Okay, so this is what we've done. We've added a grid layout inside of uh, or we've created a grid layout one column. We've added a grid layout that has a label text input label text input the same as we did before inside of the other grid layout. We already talked about why that works. And then we have a button that is inside of the main grid layout. So let's run this and see what we get. Okay, so we get this. Um, and this is actually exactly what we had before it just sits in the bottom corner of the screen, right? So you can kind of you can see why this is how this is similar. But why is it in the bottom corner of the screen? Uh, and how do we get it to like move up and be part of the full screen? So I'll show you this quickly. And then I'm actually going to probably end here and we'll go into more stuff in the next video. But essentially, the way that we get this to go into the like the map, the big part of the screen is we have to define a few more properties. So inside of our my grid here, okay, uh, actually, let's do inside of this grid layout, there's a few more properties that we can use, we can use like position, we can use size, we can do all this. Now, the reason that this is happening in the bottom left hand corner of the screen is because my grid currently is just a widget and a widget has a default size set by Kibi. So we need to override that size so that it goes to the whole size of the entire application. So the way we do that, we just say size colon, and then we're gonna say a root dot, and we'll say width, and then root dot height. Now, why does this work? And how does this work? Well, the root widget is going to be uh, my grid, okay. Uh, and my grid, right, is going to be like the size of the entire uh, app application, that's, that's what it's going to have. So it already has those default properties with height, whatnot, right. So when we do root dot width and root dot height, we're going to get that root widgets width and height, which is going to be the entire window. And we're going to fill our grid layout in that window. So we'll do, you'll see that how this works in a second. So I run this and now you can see that the entire window is filled because we used 
root dot width and root dot height and I could be saying this wrong, but it, and essentially root is just getting your main window. Okay, so the root window is getting the width and the height, and that's what we're expanding to to fill that window. So if I wanted to do, I could do something like, okay, if I go here, I could do root dot width minus 100. I could do root dot width minus 100, right? And let's run this and see what we get. And now you can see that we're going in the bottom because we've not expanded as much, right? So you can see kind of how uh, that works. And if I wanted to change the position, I'll show you quickly and then I'm going to go to the next video probably after this. Position, we could do 100, 100. And now watch what's going to happen. We're going to be padded 100 on each side. There, uh, oh, 100, 100 with, okay. So let's, we got a minus 200 from this. Quick math here. Uh, so let's do that. And you can see now we're padded in the middle of the window. So I'll let you guys kind of play around with this, add some more widgets, mess with this language. I'm going to talk about it more in the next video. Just wanted to give a quick introduction. And you can see that we're creating an entire application without having to type any code. So we're going to have all the logic essentially in here. And then all of our styling we're going to do in these KV files. And it's just nice. And you can see that it's, it's pretty easy to go and fix things as opposed to looking in one straight line and seeing like self.add widget and whatnot. Okay. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you again in the next one.